Musk hires an ex-NBC Universal ad mm. chief, yeah, Linda Yukarno, is... to be Twitter CEO, and people lose their minds. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, this is a CNBC story. Linda Yukarno, the former former global uh, advertising chief of NBC Universal, has been hired as a new CEO to Twitter. Musk confirmed the hire in a tweet, stating that Yukarno would focus on business operations while he focused on product design and new technology. Her appointment uh, comes after Musk's uh, announced his intention to step down as CEO of Twitter. She brings extensive experience and relationship in the advertising industry, which could help Twitter regain advertisers who have withdrawn due to offensive content issues. Musk acquired Twitter last year and implemented changes that led to a loss of ad revenue. Ikari knows role will be crucial in building, rebuilding relationship with advertisers and improving the platform's reputation. Her departure from NBC Universal is immediate, and Mark Marshall will serve as the interim chairman of the company's advertising and partnership group. Is this a good or a bad no, they, look? They didn't even – did they put the fact that she's huge in the World Economic Forum? Yeah. Yeah, she uh, – I don't know if they, they put it here. Article. But I think that's, they, that's they, the they, right – They intentionally so did what not you, put so that wait. There. So yeah. uh, either one of you guys take the, take the lead on this one. I've, what are your thoughts I've on this? I've spent a lot of time speaking about it. I can, I can, I can spend two hours on, the, on this topic. I'll tell you why. When I was at Harvard, the first thing they taught us around Elon Musk's in recruiting strategy was when he took over Tesla. When he took over Tesla, he didn't start Tesla. He took over Tesla from, he, had, he was an investor and he took yep. over Tesla. And they asked, what is the first hire Elon Musk makes when he moves into Tesla? Now, the question is, when you move into a new com- a company that's failing and you're going to rescue it, What's the first hire that you make? So question, guys, what is the first hire that Elon Musk makes when he joins Tesla? It's just him. Who does he, wh- who's the first person he hires? Probably an accountant, lawyer. <laughs> a, recru- a recruiter, an I'm HR manager. I'm going to say HR is what HR. I was going to say. HR, yeah. okay, cool. He's got the HR manager. What's the next person that, that they hire? Ops? Someone to make cars, engineering, head of engineering, okay. right? Okay. Where does he get this head of engineering from? Now, this is where the this is the mind shift that I couldn't understand here. Where does Elon Musk imagine that you're going to set up a car? You're going to go and take on all the car manufacturers in the world. You need someone to help you build cars. Where do you hire that someone from? from someone from the big three. Yeah. W- which one? Which which are what? Ford, GM, Ford, GM, Chrysler, Toyota, or Nissan. Yeah. Nissan's actually car. Nissan. Renault no, is massive. And no, no, no. Elon Musk hired head of engineering. From, from Google or something, yeah. from software. Why? Because you never hire from the industry that you're in. You, you hire from the industry that you think is going to disrupt mm. the industry that you're in. Now, this for me, he hired someone from the old guard. I mean, he's, he's out to disrupt media and he's hiring a CEO from the old guard. That's, that's not an Elon Musk hiring strategy. So then I analyzed this thing even further, and I thought, hold on a second, what is he doing here? And I think I understand what he's doing here. The power of Twitter is actually the product and the algorithm. Like, if you think about what Twitter is, Twitter is the product and the algorithm, and it's not actually the CEO. And I actually think that Twitter would operate better if it didn't have a CEO. I think if Twitter just operated by itself without a CEO, Twitter would be a much better platform, and we'd get much better content with a lack of... Uh, with a lack of, of, of um, Oversight of oversight and, and, and policies, right? And so I think what he's done here is he's gone and hired somebody that is the exact complement to him. So you think about like Elon Musk, the first thing he did when he walked in, he pissed off all the advertisers. He pissed off every single one of the advertisers. Did some damage there, broke it down. He did a lot of damage with the staff. Like he walked in there, he walked in there with the kitchen sink. You know, as a CEO, no matter who you are, you don't want to walk into a company with this kitchen sink. He did big damage in the, with the kitchen sink. I mean, you know, people may walk around smiling and some people may have tolerated it, but that, the message was everyone is fireable. So damage with the advertisers, damage with the internal staff. So now he needs to hire someone that is going to fix the mess that he made. So he hires, he, he hires Linda. She's great. She was head of, of partnerships and advertising at NBC. She managed a $100 billion book or whatever, however big the book was. She's famous for combining all the sales teams of all the channels, which means that he's going to make it profitable because she's got a track record doing it. But again, what is the power of Twitter? The power of Twitter is tech and product. The CEO in a private company called Twitter, it's a private company. Elon Musk owns it. The CEO is not, she's not the CEO. The CEO is the biggest shareholder. I mean, you can be the CEO, but 
you got a you got a big shareholder. Yeah, but th I think the elephant in the room is he might as well have hired Klaus Schwab. N n not really, because she's actually she's 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 a World Economic Forum, but on a specific agenda, which is um, the Great workplace. Reset agenda. No, it's work. <laughs> it's a, it's um it's the new work the environment. Year of Jubilee. The new work environment. She was also on one of the councils for Trump. I think she was on sports yes, and fitness or something. Yeah, yeah. So she's quite balanced in her views. She's an advertising person. He needs an advertising person. She's a brilliant people's person. She managed a team of 2,000 people. He's not a brilliant people's yeah, person. Yeah. She's hi he's hiring the compliment. But the, again, the thing that baffles me the most is that Elon Musk is known to hire disruptors and not known to hire disrupted. Yeah. And now I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, know. My, if I my, agree my view is that the, the, the global elite, especially the World Economic Forum, is yeah. mal is, they're a Malthusian cult. Let's just call a spade a spade. So you're saying that, oh, she's great, but she's just from this Malthusian cult. I'm don't saying, worry about I'm that saying in she's this not case, it. in this case, don't judge a book by the cover. I think let's give her a chance because everyone's yeah. reading two lines in her CV and already judging her by that. I think. So how do you hire somebody then? How do you hire somebody? You don't judge them by uh, their resume? You don't I, I mean, Pat, them. I think this is no, a great I, question I, for you. I do, you. but but hold on. Twitter's not – Twitter's – you hire them by the resume, but you also have a face-to-face -face discussion, and you judge their intellectual, their, 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 their intelligence, and their emotional intelligence. Yeah. Twitter and all of us are judging by five newspaper headlines and 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 bios and stuff like that. I'm not super excited about it. I was super surprised by this hire, but I'm kind of made a resolution that I'm not going to judge a book by, by by its cover. And again, I said to you, I don't think that the CEO of Twitter is such an important position. I think the more important yeah. position is the product manager and the tech guy, which he's keeping, and the owner of the company, which is a 100% shareholder, who's also the only person who can fire the CEO. Yeah, I think there's two options here. Number one, she's like a secret libertarian that was just using the World Economic Forum for, uh, uh, you know, for a network, right? Or she, or Elon Musk is just sick and tired of Twitter. He's like, I, I got to get back over to Tesla. And even though she's part of the World Economic Forum, and even though I'm coming out and saying that I'm a, 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 a leader in free speech, I know that she's got all the connections, and she's going to keep us from going bankrupt. So or, I'm just going to hold my nose and hire her anyway. So I think this is a great question or for Pat. You know, since you have so much experience as an entrepreneur, uh, would you hire someone? You know, if they came in and, and you said, hey, this World Economic Forum, I don't know about <clears> that. And they said, well, look, at, I'm, a, I'm a secret libertarian. I was on Trump's board for the physical education, look at the people that I follow on Twitter, they're all, you know, Ron Paul and whatnot, would you give her a pass or would you be suspicious enough to say, well, I just I just don't trust this gal, what do you think? So, so first of all, Elon Musk always reminds me how broke I am, you know, when, when, when comparing <laughs> that words, I talked about this this week in Dallas and it's great because there's always a guy that you can compete with in the marketplace, but I don't know the whole story. I'm going to give it to you from the outside perspective, from my POV. So why did he buy Twitter? Actually answer the question on why he bought Twitter. Twitter wasn't the best investment for you to buy. You could have bought hundreds of companies better than Twitter in regards to investment. You know, like, you know, if you were to sit there and say he could have bought a complimentary company to Tesla to bring him in and do X, Y, Z. He could have bought so many different companies. So why did he buy Twitter? He bought Twitter because he was concerned of freedom of speech with all the stuff that was going on. It was a cause-driven thing that he was doing, okay? No problem. Then, after he bought Twitter, we didn't yet know, because he originally bought 9.2%, whatever the whole Morgan Stanley announcement. You know, Elon is now 92 but he doesn't want to be on the board. He just kind of wants to be on the outside, and, oh, it's going to be all right. Next thing you know, no, he wants to buy the whole thing, but he's not going to be firing the CEO. No, nah, it's not really going to be happening. You know, you Professor Galloway comes up, watch, he's not going to close. All he's trying to do is manipulate the stock, and he's trying to hurt them. No, he ends up closing, and he wants, ah, I don't think it's going to really, he's not going to daily operate. No, he was responding back to everybody, customer service. You can get a hold of them. Oh my God, Elon just retweeted me. Oh my God, Elon just responded to me. Oh my God, Elon just liked my tweet. Everybody's like, damn, this guy's, how the hell is he doing this? Does he sleep at night? He's at the home office. He's doing, this is, so the whole thing was cause driven. And then the messaging was for us to get away from relying on advertisers. Then you go hire somebody whose strength is in advertising. You're confusing the audience on why you bought the company in the first place. So to me, the biggest confusion is, why'd you buy Twitter? If you bought it because you wanted to be that person, then this may not be the best person to hire. So I asked the question, why? Well, she recognized Larry Fink from BlackRock. What a great job he's doing.
and we need to pay attention to ESG. And I don't really know if there's anything really fake news. Fake news is really from the people that are the non-journalists. The true journal journalists from the mainstream media, they don't have any kind of fake news. Seriously, that's against his philosophy of what he's doing. So the, the, the messaging while we sat there, we just hired an editor-in-chief and he's saying, so, you know, what is success for me here? As a success for you here is for us to not need sponsors and advertisers. Right now, we have three major gold companies that are bidding to be the main gold sponsor for uh, uh, for the brand. And we're doing hardcore investigation on who these guys are. And th they're putting some real numbers behind it. We're not talking like a multiple six. We're talking about a real sponsor. But guess what? Here's how we don't do it, okay? This is who we are. This is how we're going to sell it. You can't get to tell us what not to talk about, all this other stuff. These are bylaws on what we do, right? Why? I don't want to rely on a person telling me what to do. I'm in a negotiation right now of a, Tom, you know the story of a, a, a sports team, okay, that, that uh, I'm working on potentially. Anyways, so we've gone back and forth, okay? This has been going on for how long now? 12 months, 11 months. I think it's the one-year anniversary of the kickoff of those negotiations. Every <laughs> background check you can think about has been done on me. And a cabinet Just search. to be a <laughs> professional minority owner of a well-known sports team that we're talking about, right? One of the four major sports that we're talking about. <sighs> you know where it's at right now? Here's where it's at right now. Why this could happen and it doesn't happen. It's... Listen, we see where you are with your positions. We don't like our owners to say stuff like this. And we don't. And then I have to go have a meeting with them right now. Literally, I'm having a meeting mm. with them next week. Okay. Because wow. they watch your content. Mm -hmm. And guess what my meeting is going to be about? What I'm going to say. I'm telling you, I needed an email that if I become an owner, you're not going to tell me what to say and what not to say. Because I left Iran, so mm. I don't have to fear freedom of speech. And I can tell you, and I made money. So I don't have to be controlled what I have to say and what I don't have to say. When I was running an insurance company, I was getting on stage talking about certain things. People were saying, you can't be saying stuff like that. Go to another company. You, you can't be talking about that kind of stuff. I totally get it. So, so for me, my concern here is you went selling this philosophy of not relying on advertisers and then you hired this person. You know how weird that is? It's kind of like this. It's like saying, you know, hey, we're going to go and be a uh, – the, the way we're going to win a, a Super Bowl championship is by the Pittsburgh Steelers model. Let's have a strong defense. Baltimore Ravens, strong defense. NFL draft becomes first six rounds. Each person you pick is all an offensive player, wide receiver, <coughs> running back, quarterback, running back, fullback. Wait a minute. You missed after that linebacker. That guy's a linebacker, defensive. You missed, what are we doing here? So it, it's like – I think that's the biggest disconnect the audience. Do you think, the think he just got in over his head? Like initially, that was his game plan. But then when he actually looked yeah. at the revenue coming in, he's like, "If I keep doing this, I'm Two going things. bust." And Two that things. could jeopardize Tesla. So okay, Be that, that was all that. fine and dandy. But now the rubber's met the road, and I got to hire someone that's going to keep us afloat. Before before you answer this, let's just consider two things. Go for it. He's got debt holders. People have debt. He, he didn't put the money in sure. himself. He has debt holders. Yeah. The debt holders are maybe looking at this and going, look, Elon, you can't be treating the advertisers like this. Ultimately, you've got to repay our debt. We'll watch your monetization model. Then 2024 is a very interesting year, right? What happens in 2024? Election. And Olympics. Okay. Two of the biggest advertising events in the world. Two of the biggest advertising events in the yeah, world. But let me get this straight. So do you realize what... Do you realize what they said the other day with, uh, uh, did you see the Richard Dreyfus interview when they said what it takes to win an Oscar nowadays? Did you hear about what it takes to be nominated for Academy Awards City, what you have to do as a company? Did you guys read this article or not? No. And you heard what Richard Dreyfus said? Okay, can you pull this article? I just want to read this to people for, for them to realize. Go, go to news. Go to news and the article will pop up. It's New York Post or Washington Times. Pick either one of them. Uh, 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 anyways, I have it right here. So yeah, I'm guessing this has a high DEI ESG score. In order score. for you, in order for you to be considered, in order for you to be considered for uh, Academy Awards now, okay, you have to have a certain number of actors in the movie that are uh, 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 part of the LGBTQ community. Oh, you need to meet a. I'll read the article to you. So Hollywood uh, New Diversity. Hollywood New Diversity, uh, let me just close this up. Wow. 
A Hollywood new diversity rules are making one actor sick. Legendary actor Richard Drive is condemning inclusivity changes that will be implemented for next year's Oscars, saying the new standards make me vomit. This is an art form. It's also a form of commerce, and it makes money, but it's an art. He says this in an interview with PBS. Firing line with Margaret Hoover, and no one should be telling me as an artist that I have to give it to the latest, most current idea of morality is Richard Dreyfus goes off and says what we are risking what are we risking here are we really risking hurting people's feelings you can't legislate that and you have to let life be life and I'm sorry I don't think there is a minority or a majority in the country that has to be catered like that and it goes into breaking down what they're looking like on screen representation needs to be a certain percentage and you know, it's classified at least one lead character from an underprecedented racial or ethnic group having at least 30% of secondary roles be from an, uh, two underprecedented groups or mainstream. Do you see how much bullshit of a you know, story this is, where they're going with this, right? Yeah. So the, the categories, each pertaining to different aspects of movie production, would require new diversity measures to be met on screen representation, creative leadership, pro- project team, industry access, opportunities, audience advancement. Okay, so now go to Olympics. What do you think is going to happen with Olympics now? What do you think is going to happen oh, with yeah, Olympics? The, the teams, that, the teams but, are going to have to have that. But that, no, but that's why. But that's why I think he's hired someone that's the opposite of him. But someone who, no, who's head of partnerships. No, but she's head of partnerships. But the, she's. But, she, but she's going to come in and she's going to say the Olympics said they're going to give us fifty million dollars if we're able to recognize transgender as such and such. Or if we can shadow ban uh, Patrick Bet David. Yeah. Uh, or. Yeah. Which, no, which, uh, I, I'm, no, I don't. I don't think we're saying the same thing. I'm saying in the Olympics, Nike are going to want to advertise. Adidas are going to want to advertise. All the sports brands. Those are, are ESG companies. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're all going to want to. Adver- those are all ESG companies, buddy. This is a war. This is not a regular thing we're talking about here. To to ma- take a stand. I'm not a Rumble guy. I'm, we do our stuff on a uh, YouTube. Yeah. But I love what Rumble's doing. I think Rumble is necessary. I'm not a Spotify guy. We put our stuff on Spotify, mm. but we're not like going out there saying, "Let me I'll buy Spotify stock." Spotify is necessary when they protected Rogan. What he did with uh, with uh, uh, Twitter, he scared the crap out of everybody in Silicon Valley. He took a company, Twitter, and then from there there was talks. Maybe he buys CNN. People started shivering. They could no longer play games. Tucker goes to Twitter. Now you want to go out there and start giving somebody like this that's going to go to advertisers and say, hey, we could get $100 million from these guys, but here's what we need to do. We need to make sure we do this, mm. and we need to make sure... But do no, you, but do you think? But I, I think, I think, this but is, I think but that's yin and yang. I think he's the one that's going to protect that we're not budging, like etc., cop, etc. She's the one that that is good at partnership. She goes to Nike and says, "Look, we can't really do that, but you know what? We can do everything." At the end of the yeah. day, ends with two words: "We'll see." Okay, yin and yang. No, everything's going to be "We'll see." Okay, "We'll see," but to me. You didn't have to go get somebody from World Economic Forum. You could have gotten somebody from a lot of different places. But do you think she, she could have been part of that? If like, you know, I could be part of the World Economic Forum and do it for completely different reasons, right? And I'm still keep my principles and my libertarian views. I could be doing it just to get inside. You know, you keep your friends closer and your or your your enemy your friends closer and your enemies closer. Do you think that she could be kind of a a, a libertarian at heart? Or a free speech enthusiast, well, no, but, have the but, same worldview, but was just in that for George, her job. George, maybe you don't. I'm playing devil's advocate. I please keep playing devil's advocate. I want you to keep playing. Let me say my thoughts on this on responding here. Okay, yes, you could hire your president. That somebody's from there. Your COO, no problem. CTO, fine. Okay. CMO, cool. CEO, no, because CEO has to buy into your philosophy and the vision. You, I don't think you can do it with your CEO. Again, guys, like I said, Musk always reminds me how broke I am because the guy's made a lot of money. I, I'm a big fan of what he's done. We talk about him in a very uh, 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 respectful way in a place like this. But I don't think you can get a CEO that doesn't fully, that goes out there and says fake news doesn't exist and thinks Larry Fink and BlackRock is doing a great job with ESG and thinking ESG and DEI, all this stuff are great things that are being done. No, you, you're, you're, you're going to cause concern in certain people that got there and stay, you know, started being active on Twitter because they finally realized, I'm not going to get. And after Twitter files one, two, three, four, five, how many times did we realize who's being this and who's being that? So now guess who's going to be doing the hiring? Who's going to be hiring the people in the company? Elon? No, she is. Who's she going to hire? Who's she going to bring in? Okay, so so who now? If I'm the CEO, 
I run a company. I run multiple companies now. So who who's do I get approval on who to hire? No, I'm hiring the person. I don't go to the chairman of the board. This is who we're going to bring as CMO. Yeah, and you fast forward two years, and Twitter is Twitter of 2019. That's the point. It's I mean, back it to swamp right back. again. Hold on. So hold on, uh, you're not you're not considering <laughs> two things. First of all, it's a private company with a with a majority, if not a hundred percent, of the shares held by by one individual. In a private company, you have a CEO, but the real boss is the owner. It's not a public company where there's there's a board. It's Elon. Elon, whatever Elon says eventually goes. She knows that. The second thing is, he is extreme on the one side. When you're extreme on the one side, you piss a lot of people off, internally and externally. What's the best strategy to mitigate that? Bring in the yang. Bring in the yang and let... If it's play. only about money, if it's only about money, Rand, yeah. if it's only about money, and you were doing this to make money and figure out a way to increase your $44 Agreed. billion, dollars, you should have looked elsewhere. You could have made money in different places. Going this direction and compromising the real threat that we have with ESG, DI, DEI, all of these things that's going on in media, people are sitting there looking at candidates that are criminals, yet uh, the real criminals are the ones that are being sold as angels. It's kind of a weird time we're living in. So th th this guy who did this, now again, I've hired people, and from the outside, people have bitched about who I hired, and they say, I can't believe you hired that person. How could you pick her? And how could you pick him? And why'd you make her the CEO? You think she can be the president? You don't know what you're doing. Totally get it. I get that. But but my concern, if it was money, you should have bought a different company. If it was a cause, you really wanted to be that cause guy, then stick to the cause and hire somebody that's a CEO that's more be more a registered independent coming from a different space who's the real who's the real ceo of a private company in a technology sector just quickly is it is it the owner plus the cto plus the project manager or is it the appointed ceo ask the question again who is the real ceo of a private company that relies on this technology is it the owner plus who is also the cto and the product manager or is it the appointed ceo Who's the real CEO? I, I know what you're saying, but also on the flip side, George Soros just sold all his shares with Tesla. Public announcement. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. He's leaving, you know, uh, Tesla, and t Tesla is not in the best shape right now with all the criticism they're getting. And Tesla was at one point a trillion dollar company. So you're talking about a company that is calling left and right for Elon to go there and do this. This is not a guy that's you know just doing Twitter by himself and is going out there. Hanging out. This guy's this guy's got a lot of stuff on his plate. So I do think when you bring somebody like this, who is coming in, you, you know what her personality is like. Here's what the personality is like. I guarantee you, in an interview, she asked the question of Elon. I'm fully convinced she asked this question. Elon, you gonna let me run the company, or am I gonna be one of your employees, one of your friends that you do everything through them, or are you gonna let me run this company? So I'm not leaving NBC Universal if you're not gonna let me run the company. Zero to 100. What's the chance that she asked that question in the interview? 100. Okay, perfect. So guess what he's gonna, she's going to say? So what can we put in place for me to know you're going to let me run the company? There has to be an agreement, okay? So if he starts trying to impose, she doesn't like it, we're going to hear about it within three to six months. If Great. Doesn't and, work out and, who, and who's the world going to side with? Well, with him. The, with him. And that's the whole. That's the that's the game here. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you, but for you know, there are a lot of different people that I'm sure he interviewed a lot of different people that uh, he could have gone through. Um, there are a few things that are philosophically against what he believes in, and she doesn't think it's a big deal. Isn't philosophically? One of, isn't one of the philosophies in a company like this that if you really want to make it um, uh, neutral? then you've got to have someone very strong pulling left and someone very strong pulling right? No, I don't think so. I think there's one thing you don't have to be neutral in. I have no desire. Like, there's one thing we do when we hire people here. Mm. You know what it is? Here's is, I'm not neutral about this. You're going to read a book every month and write a paper on it. Fair. Seriously? I'm not neutral about it. I had a person in the company that says, well, Patrick, this is, you remember this, this is too much, you know, we, people are stressed out. I said, nope, that person needs to leave. They don't read the book of the month. Agree. So what, you know what we did? We created in our bylaws, day one, when we're hiring, pre-hiring, agree to read a book every month and write a paper on it. You're serious? I haven't read a book for 20, I totally get it. If you're not going to do this, this isn't a company for you. Okay, two, here's what we believe in in Valuetainment. What's that? I don't care if you're any ethnicity, any sex, but I care that you 
know that capitalism is the way to go. We don't sit here and say, well, we should have a couple communists here as well. And let's have a communist CEO run it. And let's see how Vahit Taman does. It's okay. Let's have a neutral because I'm so much of a capitalist. Let's bring a communist. No, you cannot compromise freedom of speech. But you're talking about a capitalistic company with capitalistic ideals. This is a different business. This is supposed to be a neutral platform which is not about being monetized. Yeah, but neutral, by definition, is freedom of speech. So Correct. if you've got someone that's way on the left and way on the right, I totally agree with you, but I they agree. still have to agree on free speech. Look, again, I, I'm, I'm skeptical of it. I've agreed not to judge a book by its cover. I'm just making the counter case here. Yeah. Having studied a lot of Elon's hiring decisions in the past, this one was one that truly surprised me, and th uh, this is how I've rationalized it over the last couple of days uh, since it came out. Well, did you see I, Elon's I wouldn't have tweet? Hired about when he hired her, did you actually see his tweet? No, what did he say? He basically said that she's going to be running business operations, and, I'm gonna be and he's going to be running product design and technology, and together they're going to turn it into X, the everything app. We talk about this all the time, where they're just more than a free uh, free speech platform. They want to be the <clears throat> the go-to everything app. Like, how, what, what do they have in China? What's the go-to app that they have there? We, uh, WeChat. Everything? It's WeChat. Exactly. That's so essentially what he wants to turn it into. Let's play a little game here. Yeah? Um, how long is she going to last? Let's maybe all oh. just write down on a piece of paper how long <laughs> is she going to last, and then let's meet again and see. How, yeah, how, I mean, basically, how, your argument is ends justify means, but then that goes back to what Pat was saying. It's 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 what's your priority here? Because initially, your priority was freedom of speech, and now all of a sudden, your priority is profit and growing the world's biggest app. Well, so, who, so where who? where are we here, Elon? You know what what's your true objective? What happened? Elon passed that the one. There was one Sunday where Elon tweeted something, and he said, "If you post any links on your Twitter." which take people out of Twitter, that, was that, to, account, um, that account was going to be banned. It, it was to that one platform. It the, was the, 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 Substack. Substack, yeah. But it wasn't only Substack. The way it was worded is, the way it was worded is if you post any links to go outside of Twitter, what, what happens? Who is going to push back on Elon when he does shit like that? Because for one weekend, I shat myself because I use my, my Twitter to promote my YouTube. And I post links to my YouTube show as you guys post to your podcast. And I sat there and I thought, if this goes on, my account's getting banned here because every second tweet is, listen to my podcast, meet me here at, at Patrick but David show. Someone needs to push back because otherwise it's the Elon show. And you're saying that should be her. I'm saying, I'm saying her. if you were going to hire someone to push back, you want to hire someone that is push, pulling the other way and not someone that it's not a business. It's a platform that mm -hmm. is designed to remain neutral. I, I, I understand fully what you're saying. And I don't disagree that you need somebody that's going to do, uh, 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 you know, certain things. For example, okay, marrying a wife, what's more likely for the marriage to be catastrophic? Ready? Both are Christians. One is a communist. The other one is a capitalist. Or both are capitalist. One's a Christian. One's an atheist. What's more likely for the marriage to work out? What's more? Let me ask the question one more time, okay? They did a study on this? I'm going to ask the question. I want you to actually think about this, mm. okay? You got a husband and wife, both Christians. They met at a church. One is a full-blown capitalist. She believes, you know, in personal responsibility. Right. You can do something about it. The other is a communist, thinks rich people are greedy. They have character flaws. They're selfish. They marry each other. Or husband and wife marry. They both believe in capitalism. One's a Christian. One's an atheist. Which one is more likely to work out? So you're asking the level of idea of, of uh, importance of what ideals. What is more is important, religion or philosophies of how to live life? I would say I think it depends on kids. Assuming there was no kids in the equation, I would say the atheist and the Christian have a better chance. What do you say, Tom? I think the atheist and the Christian have a better chance. If there's no kids, because I think that would get real complicated. I think I think it's different. I think that you're defined in hierarchies, and I think the hier I think I mean I, don't, I haven't thought about it, but I think you're defined as being male and then being of a certain religion and then being of a certain philosophy. I think, but I haven't thought about it long enough. My parents got married. They were both Christians. They both believed in Jesus. They both believed in God. Okay, my mother was a communist. My dad was a capitalist. I cannot tell you how catastrophic that was in the household mm, and how really? confusing it was. I can't even describe it to you. Huh. What a hot mess it was, okay? One believed rich people are greedy and they're terrible human beings. The other one believed poor people are lazy 
and they don't do anything to take full responsibility for themselves. They divorced twice in 20 years, okay? My parents, twice in 20 years, okay? In, in this case, the premise of what you brought everybody in was freedom of speech, was anti-ESG, was anti-DEI. I don't care about all the other stuff. That was the core values and principles. I, I don't care about all the other things that you do, but the values and principles has to be the same. I don't care what religion she is. I don't care what religion he is. I don't care what ethnicity. Philosophically, they're not on the same page. One believes fake news is only by others that are content creators, and he believes fake news can happen from mainstream media because he exposed everybody with the Twitter files. One believes that uh, you know Larry Fink and you know, all these guys, BlackRock and ESG, they're doing a good job for society because we need to really contribute by... And so the other guy's like, not for it. And now all of a sudden you, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't to take know. It, to so, take it to a, another level, yeah. one's pr most likely an authoritarian, a, a, a collectivist, and the other is an individualist. So, you know, how does that one pan out as well? So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.